Good morning. Let's start this morning with prayer. Lord, we thank you. Let this day be the best day of our lives, Lord. Amen. Well, verse 8 of Genesis chapter 40, the cupbearer to the king. We had to cut short because time ran out, but I'm going to read from verse 8 on. And they said unto him, we have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me then, I pray, I pray you. And I be, we both had dreams, they answered, but there's no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, Do not interpretation belong to God? Tell me your dreams. The interpret in Hebrew means to open up. Open up. Open up the can of worms. Let it all spill out. That's what interpretation means. Now, the next level of interpretation would be like Daniel. See, the first level of interpretation is, well, tell me your dreams. I'll explain what it means. That would be first level. But Daniel, and if, if you read Daniel 2, 27, 28, um, the king is asking the uh, wise men and the <laughs> interpreters. They gather them and said, tell me what I dreamt and interpret. <laughs> That's kind of crazy, right? The king who has authority to kill you <laughs> at whatever reason, at whim, says, well, I, I had this incredible dream, but um, tell me what I dreamt and tell me what that means. And so all the wise men and now in the panic mode and they said, no, sir, uh, sh share with us what you dream and we'll tell you what it means. And then, no, that's not going to fly this time, you know. Because dream is symbolic language, and you can sort of kind of guess, right? especially a dream that, um, well, cupbearer, the baker, and also the pharaoh, you know, seven healthy cows, um, and then ugly cow come and eat the healthy cows. And you, know, you could sort of like, bonus, you know, seven years is it 70 decades 70 years i mean if it's 70 years there will be no point of dreaming right so uh, here joseph says that doesn't interpretation opening up the can it belongs to god there's nothing i can do there's you cannot really go through dream interpretation one-on-one you know, go through eight-week course and then somehow, no, it's just too fast. It has to be given. You cannot be taught. You know, it's like, how do you, how do you go from zero to 60 in, you know, 4.5 seconds? Well, you better be given a Ferrari to ride on. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't going to do that. You know, you can't run zero to 60 miles in less than five seconds, you know, you gotta be, something has to be given. All the training means nothing at this point, right? Because something has to be given to you. So that's what um, Joseph is saying that, well, interpretation belongs to God. There's nothing I can do. So in that way, it's just like, well, you don't feel responsible and you feel fine. It's like, bring it on. I'm not the one who's doing it anyways, right? So the chief bearer told him his dream to Joseph. And he said to him, in my dream, there was a grapevine in front of me. And the vine were three branches. Then as soon as it budded, its blossom burst open and its cluster produced ripe grapes in rapid succession. Now, Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. I took the grapes and squeezed into Pharaoh's cup. Then I placed the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Now, a lot of archaeologists, of course, you know, argue that, well, Egypt was not only a country to grow corn, right? Because all these pig, 
picture tells that they grew corn, wheat, harvested, but they also learn how to press the grapes and make it into wine. So it was a wine country as well. Right? It would be the historical written record of Pharaoh's cupbearer saying that I squeezed the vine and became a squeezed the grapes and became a wine. Then Joseph said to them, said to him, this is an interpretation from the Lord. God opened up the can. Now I understand the three branches are three days. In three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to the office. And you shall place Pharaoh's cup in his hand as formerly when you are his cup bearer. Now, the tricky part is this. You could interpret, you know, as you fit. But once you start quoting days, then you are liable, right? It could have been three weeks. Yeah, in three weeks. Or it could have been three months. Or three years. Right? No? In three days. You'll know if this interpretation is correct or not. Putting his name behind, signing it. I'm telling you, in three days. And then he says... I haven't done anything wrong to be in this prison. So if I have this gift from God and God is the one who interpret and give you accurate this, uh, um, interpretation, please remember me. I didn't deserve to be in here. Right? So he's pleading his case. There's nothing wrong with that. And Joseph, of course, wants to get out. Right? Uh, he wants to be free. It doesn't matter if it's a chief prisoner guard. <laughs> right? So this is where actually a lot of cults began. One particular cult, uh, it's called A8. A uh, few of our, my friends were in it and they paid handsomely and they led a lot of young people to, in a way, their academic destruction. <laughs> because uh, in the dream, the founder of this cult, or Tami, coming future cult. Uh, Tami, fu coming future mission organization. They always have to put mission. But the founder had a dream. And Jesus came to him and said this. Pointing his fingers, he lifted, he gave the sign eight, eight in his dream and so now uh this ridiculous guy goes around in korea saying that well i had a dream jesus is coming back 1988 right 1988 eight eight olympics that's the year that god's gonna usher in jesus is coming back end of the world's coming so he told everybody to sell everything don't go to high school. Do not graduate high school. Jesus is coming back. So all oh, these idiots in LA, uh, unfortunately led by a couple of well-meaning but misguided, misled uh, pastors uh, who took literally hundreds of these kids came out of high school. Probably they are cursing the days of those because <laughs> Jesus doesn't come back, 88. You know, um, and a lot of lives have been ruined by this one misinterpretation of dream. Because <laughs> he actually he told me about it. I was shaking my head. I brother, I can't believe you really believe that crap, you know, that is so stupid so crappy and you really gonna bank your life on that and matter of fact you're gonna mislead this hundreds of you know i get a call from this uh, high school alert mom you know really upset the pastor who did this and took my daughter my son out of high school he's doing fine you know he's still respected as a spiritual leader what about my son he ruined my son's life he took him out of my high school and there's nobody now. I mean, 
I'm not to blame anybody. I'm simply saying that, gosh, use common sense, right? If God doesn't speak to you, just use common sense. Don't go beyond common sense. Do you have gift of interpretation? Well, check it out with spiritual leader. Make sure that it checks out. Don't do, be on your own claiming that Jesus is coming back. 88, because you saw him in the dream. Probably was just your mind was full of 88 Olympics, you know. And so let's 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 be careful. Let's be uh, humble. Humble ourselves. And then do not be arrogant, because I would not want to be in your shoes if you misled people. I mean, to that extent, ruining their lives like that. So, Father God, in fear and tremble, we come to you. We want to serve you. We want to um, be a minister, but Lord, with, with fear in you, that we're not going to misguide, mislead people, Lord. Help us. Holy Spirit, God, come. Speak to us today that we'll dream dreams, we'll see visions, we'll hear your voice, and we'll see and be guided by you, Lord, today. Thank you, Lord. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.